giving up. I'm not going to stop till I find you. Come on, Lord. You ready your life. Here I come. I can't wait. I got to run. I'm not giving up. I'm not going to stop till I find you. Oh, no. ready All right, we're going to get started in just a few. Just like 34 seconds, probably. I'm going to get on this little monitor and make sure everything sounds good on the stream. All right. Danielle's fading me, fading the music down a bit, doing an awesome job over there. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, welcome and good morning, uh, Evergreen Church. Um, I have very, very brief opening remarks before we get into our uh, church service today. So, Good to see your smiling faces. Um, and uh, so uh, what I had jotted down here was, um, is that, you know, you've heard the saying, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, God is fighting for you. I mean, I just heard that, you know, I was a song, God is fighting. It's like a, God is fighting for you. I'll stop singing now because it's very embarrassing. They'll probably flag me on the stream and be like, yeah, like, that's illegal, out of tune. Um <clears throat> Not even a copyright thing, but more of it. Anyhow, so yeah, God is fighting um, for us. Um, and I just, it's a its a different paradigm. You know, God is fighting um, for your victory. And the victory is not like, you know, everything, if you read, if you read the red letters about Jesus and you, you get down with what he was really preaching, he was, he wasn't, it wasn't a secret. He was very uh, ex explicit and clear that the kingdom of heaven is, is backwards, is upside down from the kingdom of the world. And so I'm going to tell you, you know, there are times where I, I don't say, I wouldn't say I forget that, you know, I'm in the kingdom of heaven, but I just realize, oh, I'm in, oh, whoops. I, I was in the, the normal right side up. I should be living upside down. Does that make sense? And you just sort of kind of catch yourself every once in a while, like, oh, thank you, Lord, for reminding me and showing me that. Um, but the world would say, you know, your victory is is for you. It's for, you know, for your betterment. You're selfish in a sense, you know, to, to take it to the extreme is for the betterment of yourself somehow. And, you know, the victory that God's fighting for is not a victory solely for you to, to have what you need and want only. He's he's winning. A, he's fighting a victory, uh, so that we'll have what he wants for us, which is in a roundabout way, the, actually the best thing. It, it is, and um, it's sort of like something where you've eaten your favorite dish, and there's no real way to explain it. You see, you just got to try it, and the Bible even says, "Taste and see that the Lord is good." There you go, boom. Um, so, so this victory winning and fighting is really about seeing God's victory happen in your life. It's pretty profound. Um, it's it's not this get yours mentality, you know, get yours. I want to get mine. I want to get his, okay? So it's not to get yours, but to get his. And um, so I just want to, I just want to kind of set us out in that direction and, and say a prayer. Um, let's get what God has today. Lord, help us today. As we even just try to get our head around that, our heart around that, in the midst of a culture and a society that just completely flies against that, um, it is a challenge. And every place in the world, whether it's social, economic disparity on this side or that end of the spectrum or wherever, rich, poor, in the middle, outside, of whatever, there are universal things, um, principles that you teach us and, and you invite us into um, a victory that transcends. It doesn't ignore, but it actually transcends all those horizontal matters. And you and you bring us into this vertical place. And then we deal with the horizontal. We do. I mean, that has to happen. It's got to get dealt with at some point. But you invite us into something um, that is, is profoundly powerful. Um, and that's this victory in you that we're talking about. Um, this isn't a whole sermon right now. This is just a taste and see that the Lord is good. God, help us to, to see, to catch, to see what you've got going on, um, to get caught up in that victory. Lord, I pray you would help set us free from our horizontal ways, our horizontal 
um, habits, if you will. Help us today. We're, we're, you know, the most seasoned Christians can still pray this prayer. Help us to, to just leave those behind right now, right now. And I'm excited as we gather together, I believe that there's an extra measure of faith in this space. And I just want to stick my hand out in the stream of it and get caught up in that too. So will you bless our time together as we uh, truly attempt to be a blessing to you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Well, I love you guys. And uh, we're going to get started. We're going to do some worship, some song worship today. All right. So we're starting it off with All Hail King Jesus. All right. There was a moment when the lights went out. It's a good lead in here. When death had claimed its victory. The king of love had given up his life. The darkest day in history. Just think about that a second. They're on a cross that made for sinners For every curse is blood atoned Wow One final breath and it was finished But not the end we could have known Yep For the earth began to shake and the veil was torn What sacrifice was made As the heavens roared All hail King Jesus Momentous thing to ever have happened. It is still in effect today. A flash of light. When all was lost. Hallelujah. All hail. 
so profound that God himself sent this Jesus himself in the flesh, the God, the God man, on a mission to rescue us. It's profound that he would leave a perfect heaven and come to a sideways and broken earth for us. We make it so complicated sometimes. I want to know you, Lord. But it's truly a simple gospel. Like I know a friend. I want to know you, Lord. Sing it again. I want to know you, Lord. Like I know a friend. I want to know you, Lord. So I'm laying down all my religion. I'm laying down. I want to know you, Lord. I'm laying down all my religion. basics down to the nitty-gritty this morning. We're all doing it together. I used to think that I could box you in, but I'm laying down. I want to know you, Lord. I used to think that I could box you
the simple gospel, I will rejoice in you, Lord. I will rejoice in the simple gospel, and I will rejoice in you, Lord. All right. If you guys, um, just a little moment here as we are just staying in this moment of worship and thinking about that simple gospel. Um, you know, that line, I haven't read, you know, what the, the author or the writer of the song, what that, you know, I reach out and you find me in the dust. Um, and, I'm, and I'm, obviously there's a reason he chose that, but I was thinking today about two things, whether one is if you've, if you want to take grab a seat feel free uh if it, it I, I know i know that it speaks to i believe that it speaks to creation when you know god formed us from the dust of the earth and so when i think about uh, you know the other the latter part of that no amount of untruths can ever separate us there is such there there are so many uh false narratives and and untrue accounts and stories about even creation and you know we weren't created we were accidentally uh came about from you know an evolutionary standpoint um a primeval primordial is the word ooze and lightning struck it and it gave it life or, or something and there's lots of all their explanations okay um but if, if you were to believe that something that is important to you just you know they just threw it together it was accident versus somebody crafted something do you understand the value you know that 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 the difference there you know um i, I see i was shout out to lauren sisters and you guys got your drinks today right and so i mean if those i, I hope somebody followed a recipe you know crafted it just do they taste right this morning are they yeah that's i'm getting a nod over there that's good you know it'd be a little different if they just kind of well, yeah, just throw a little bit of that a little bit of that and you know, we'll just build on the floor and, and come and shut it down for the night and come back in the morning and hope that it's come up in a cup, you know. I ain't going to touch that. Um, so there's a real difference between intentional design and, you know, whether you're a, you know, like to cook, you like to build woodworking. Um, I don't know. When I work with wood, it doesn't work. It's just wood. It's just wood doesn't work. John, on the other hand, anyways, um, Carpenter John over here. And so the other part is, I think, reaching out in the dust is sometimes, you know, you find yourself, you're just, you know, you're covered in filth, right? Whether it's by your own doing or somebody, you know, drove a car through a puddle right next to you. You know, that's a funny image, but if you ever it happens to you, that's not a good deal. But you're filthy and, you know, you reach, you reach out and, and I think I think that the song is actually about the, the, the former, about the creation. But, you know, my mind went there and I thought, yeah, I mean. Even if the devil, whether the devil says you're an accident or the devil says you're not good enough. I mean, that's a theme in the song, too. I've been told I'm not good enough. That's not true. That is not true by God. It's not true by the Lord God who created you and loves you. You know what? And so I just want to share that with you guys and help help keep, keep sailing in this direction. Um, I want to say a quick little prayer before I bring Linda up. But God, thank you that you do love us that much. And there are, I just want to acknowledge as, as a minister in this church that there are so many lies that come against what you say. And we just want to collectively reject those lies. And if someone needs a little help, like, hey, help me reject that. I'm here to, I'm standing with you today to help you reject that you, uh, the lies of you're not good enough, that you're an accident, that you're unworthy. You know, you don't even deserve to be in this church this morning. Those are all lies. And I'm agreeing with you that those are lies. And in their place, we're going to bring the truth of God, which is you were created. You were, the Bible says you were God's workmanship, workmanship, created in advance to do good things. Um, that he so loved you that he sent his only son on a rescue mission, John 3, 16, to come to earth, to show his love, put his money where his mouth was, if you will. God loves you so much today. It's so easy to, to get to to kind of let that fly through, um, Lord. It's easy for us to just kind of let that fly through as as a. Uh
cliche, but let let us ponder it today. And I want to I just I just want to join with anybody that needs that prayer today. And I know Danielle does. I know every person in here will agree. God is good. He loves you. You're valued. And we are going to reject those lies today. God be with us as we continue our service today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you all for hearing me out, hearing my heart, hearing hopefully you heard the Lord's heart above all. We'll give it up for Linda. Hi, everybody. Okay. So let's recite our prayer together. Lord. I pray for justice in the world, for the lifting up of the poor out of their misery, for the breaking of the power of tyrannical regimes, for the end of violence, warfare, racial conflict, and strife. Thank you that you are a God of justice. Amen. Okay. So our first trip is to Samoya. And I just wanted to point something out that was very interesting here on number five. It's an ancient code of or code, not cold, ancient code of behavior. Every di- everyday life isn't about you. It's about us. There is no I, only we. That sounds like a Christian parable of some sort, right, or mantra. I thought that was pretty neat. Of course, they do have a 96% Christian state, and 96% Christian population. It is the state religion. And then... So here we, this is uh, the antithesis. I'm going to kind of burst our bubble on this ancient philosophy right here. We're going to go down to number 10. Human rights concerns include domestic violence, unrepresentation of women, and poor prison conditions. And then number 11, domestic violence uh, stat shows 9 in 10 women experience physical or emotional violence at the hands of family members. 6 out of 10 women experience intimate partner violence and one out of five women are raped. 33% of those raped contemplate suicide, while 13% attempt suicide. And then, of course, 25% poverty. So uh, I wonder where the code went to, you know. Uh, It's a real family-oriented society, so I I don't know what plays into number uh, 10 and 11 and 12, but, you know, Obviously, they're not taking that code real seriously, not everybody, not the ones that perpetrate this violence. But anyway, so those are things we need to pray about today. And, of course, we have their first female prime minister. So, see, that's another antithesis to women are underrepresented, underrepresented, but they do have uh, a woman prime minister, and they've had some strong female uh, representation in their, like, kingdom type because they went from being... A kind of uh, what do you call a monarchy type system into uh, voting for people anyway so they need prayer obviously so let's pray for this prime minister this first female prime minister father god we pray for her right now we pray that you would just download into her such great wisdom in addressing the societal economical and health care issues here we pray god for her spiritual well-being we pray that lord she can be an example for the women of that country and that god as she has been elected the first female prime minister that it will also uh, put women in a place of honor and respect instead of uh, degradation and violence being perpetrated upon them we pray for the church as a whole we pray that traditional class structure and pre-christian cultural standards uh, that didn't transform people by the power of the gospel we pray that those walls will be broken down we pray that this church that suffers nominalism and rivalry among denominations that doesn't generate a good spiritual atmosphere we pray that that wall will be broken down we pray that pride and politics that influence church life and the financial demands on a poor population that's very laborious we pray that all of these walls will be broken down and we pray that oh god you would touch those that are right now uh, challenged in domestic strife. And, Lord, we pray that you would touch these people as a whole, that, Lord, your revival spirit will light upon them, that there will be a spirit of renewal, of repentance. We pray, God, that uh, you would also safeguard against further Mormon growth. And we pray for the Holy Spirit to reveal to Christians the heiress of Mormonism. And we pray, O God, that as Mormons receive and send more missionaries to and from Samoya than any other denomination, that there will be a change in that father and that 
uh, fundamental believers will rise up and feel called to go to this island to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we pray for the women right now that are being affected by this uh, horrific violence, that Lord, there will be a turn in that. And we pray that the family structure will start uh, being healthy spiritually and physically and we thank you lord that you care about these people that are precious in your sight in christ's name amen okay so now we're going to head over to san marino and this is in europe and i thought it was an island but actually it's all engulfed by italy so it's like smack dab in the middle of italy and so that's kind of an unusual uh geographical context to this particular country and it says 97 percent christian but and they're catholic uh, uh, majority are catholic but half of the population confesses but only half practice right. so it doesn't matter what we confess it matters what we actually possess and practice right and so we're going uh, this is an interesting fact on number two they they elect two different like co-leaders from opposite parties, so it'd be like us electing a Democrat and a Republican to rule for six months, and then we have another election to put in different Democrat and Republican co-leading. I don't know how that works for them. Maybe it works well. It's a prosperous country. However, they say it's to ensure the balance of power. Wow. And there's more female heads of state than any other country. Maybe that's why it works. Give a shout out to us women. We've been seeing a lot of women being, you know, uh, put down and held down and abused. So praise the Lord that we've got some women, huh? Okay, like we've got a woman pastor. All right, now then, the thing that's not good is number four. They legalized abortion. They were the last European country to do so. So all of so just happened in August. So all of these years they held a tight rein on that. And now then, uh, I guess... It's even uh, occurred there. So, number five, they have more cars than people, more, uh, you know, than any other by uh, percentages than any other country as well. So, but this is something that I feel proud of for this particular country, that during World War II, they provided a haven for 100,000 Jews. And the domestic violence, there's no stats. The poverty is low enough that it's not even reported. So... Those are good things about this country, but they need the gospel of Jesus Christ to really lay hold of people's hearts, don't they? So we pray right now for both of these uh, captain regions, that God, they will govern this, this country well, and that God, if they don't know Jesus as their Savior, that they will know Jesus Christ. And we pray that the, the little bit of a corruption that has come into this uh, particular country, that God, it will be eradicated, and that they will remain uh, free, and that unencumbered and that lord they will remain a place that that will govern correctly we pray for a new season of true spiritual liberty they're known as the ancient land of liberty but they uh, have freedom to worship but evangelism hardly exists so god as past evangelical uh, outreaches have resulted in jail or expulsion from the country we pray that god you would send uh, new church plants, new ministries, that, Lord, the Catholic Church will become friendly and ecumenical towards the Protestants. God, God, we just pray that they will have a revival as well. Oh, Father, just baptize them in your Holy Spirit and let this country, God, be a country that will shine in the midst of all the countries there that they believe in Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and walk it out as such. Thank you, Father God. Okay, now we're going to head over to Africa. This is uh, Sao Tome and Principe. I love that. Y'all want to say it with me? <laughs> so anyway, it's a little uh, island chain off of the west coast of Africa, kind of where it goes in. Um, you know, it goes way out and then dips in. It's right in there. So here again, we have a, a Christian population, but 55% are Catholic adherents. They're, I think they were Portugal, uh, what do you call it, colonized, yeah, and then they got their independence in 75. But let's look at number 9, 10, 11, and 12. 66% poverty, 14% children are underweight, 7% are undernourished. Uh, the DV shows that 28% of, of women report abuse over a lifetime. Child marriage is still in existence, 28%, and then there is a violent crime rate. 
So we need to pray over this particular country. Father God, we pray right now over this prime minister and this president that they will govern this country well. We pray that they will have wisdom. We pray, oh God, that they will be Christ followers, that they will know how to to lead because you have downloaded it into them because they are calling out unto you. We pray for the Holy Spirit to move through the Catholic Church, bring in renewal. We pray for the sovereignty of Jesus to be clearly demonstrated in this uh, uh, Catholicism, uh, Catholicism uh, religion. We pray, oh God, that the growth of Islam and marginal sects will not take hold. We pray, Lord, that you right now will touch the missionaries, that they might have great impact on these islands. We pray for the development of locally led, culturally relevant congregations with effectively trained leaders. We pray for local support of national workers and for the launching of an interdenominational training center. Father God, bless the Assemblies of God, the Nazarenes, Deeper Life, uh, YAM, and all the others that have a presence here. We We pray for those in poverty and the children with nutritional issues that, God, you would send them help. And we pray for the victims of domestic violence, that the light of Jesus will give them hope that is beyond what they're experiencing right now in real time. Oh, Father, touch these people. We pray in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus, and we thank you, Lord. Now we're going over to Saudi Arabia. Number five, ranked among the worst of the worst in human rights violations, mass executions, including beheading, and they do go by a strict Sharia law. We also know that VOM says there's covert ops only, open doors, says it's extreme persecution. And then, of course, you see that they have some good things about their country, but because of this uh, uh, powerful Islamic regime, then they, they have a lot of suffering as well. Number 11, this is what really jumped out at me. Two-thirds of the population is under the age of 35. So, God, send your Holy Spirit to those that the youth will rise up and be able to receive Jesus and have an enlightenment and be able to change the things, Lord, that they haven't been able to do. And, Father God, we also pray right now that as domestic violence that relates to male guardianship, that these women will come out from under this. Oh, God, we pray that 35% that suffer physical violence and 50 that suffer psychological abuse and 22 that suffer sexual abuse that God you would send hope to these women they cannot stop your spirit from reaching these women so Father God we pray that in their night hours as they're laying there and they're uh, under uh, thumbs of the men in their lives God and they're they're like bound up in a prison Lord in their own homes we pray God that you would send your Holy Spirit in their dreams and that oh God even if they're imprisoned in the physical that in the spiritual they will not be so God, we pray for great revival to come upon this nation. We pray great revival among the youth that, Lord, they will rise up and know that something's not right. That, oh, God, they'll seek for that that is uh, more hopeful, more uh, eternal. And, God, they'll receive it because they seek after you, not knowing it's you they seek after. We pray right now, God, that even this being a country for men and women that are trafficked for purposes of slave labor and commercial exploitation, that, God, it will not be be able to continue, Lord. We pray, God, for your help right now. We pray that this king's heart will be softened towards Christians, women, and other minority groups. Only you can do it, Father. We pray for strength, wisdom, and courage for the community of foreign believers. We pray, God, that as as they are being watched at all times, that, oh God, they'll be able to have boldness and no fear. We pray, oh God, that those Saudis that have come to faith in Christ, that face the death penalty if they're caught, that, oh, God, you would continue to touch them. And as their numbers are increasing, that, oh, Lord, they will have such hope, such peace, such joy that, oh, God, it will not be compared to what they have to worry about. Lord, we pray for <coughs> a miracle to legalize Christianity. And, Lord, we also pray over the satellite television stations to reach these homes, Lord. Oh, God, send out your word to these people as they're sitting there. And Maybe the women especially sit there and have to be indoors a lot. That, oh, God, they'll hear the gospel of Jesus. And we thank you now. Amen. Now we're going to go and end up our trip here in South Dakota. 
And you can just look at the stats. We pray now, Lord, for this Governor Nome as she leads her state. Well, God, she's done such a great job. And, Lord, we pray that you continue to bless her and that she will be such a, a Christ follower, Lord, and that she will be led by your Holy Spirit. We pray that the religious history that looms large over South Dakota will be a present-day reminder to the population of Christian believers. We pray for revival and bold evangelizers to spread the gospel. We pray for the Native American people here, Lord, on the nine reservations, that God, they too will meet Jesus. Lord, we pray for those affected by domestic violence, that God, you will uh, rescue them, that you would save and deliver their perpetrators. Lord, we pray that the crime rate will decrease because they are one of the states that's seeing a crime rates increase. And Lord, we pray for the success of industries that better the lives of the South Dakotans and better the lives of the whole United States. We thank you, Lord, and praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Uh, welcome to Evergreen in person and online, and we're so glad you're here. Um, so we are going to have an, a little bit different kind of message. Um, we're going to actually do something at the end where we, uh, it's, it'll be like if, like if you were in a science class and you had a lab, it's like where you have the lab part where you actually do what you learned. We're going to do something together, and it will make sense once I get in the message. But I just wanted to let everybody know ahead of time that it's going to be a little bit different. And um, and anyone who doesn't feel comfortable participating later, that's completely fine. There's, like, literally zero judgment. You can stand off to the side and just watch. It's okay. Um, but so I'm going to talk about – we're going to be in Matthew 18. But before, before we actually read it, I want to talk about um, – we're basically going to try putting into practice what Jesus said we could do um, together as a body, uh, the way we can pray and the way we can do things together that will cause him to agree with us. So that's that's what we're going to do later. But what I want to open with is there's such a push and pull in our world for different um, viewpoints, right, in different ways of life. That's very clear. It's, I think it's always been, there have always been many viewpoints, right, always. But now, because we live so connected globally with uh, technology, now we, like, really know what other people think. We really know what's out there, okay? Um, it's kind of like Pandora's box got opened, and now we can't put the lid back on. Uh, the good news is that Jesus knew what was going to happen. So none of this, thank you, Stewie, none of this is new new to him. But at the same time, again, you know, I said recently, every time there's something negative that the enemy brings, God brings a response. And the response is that the Internet and other forms of technology are used widely for the gospel. And so that's how it's redeemed. But... All that to say, I follow a gentleman, um, love him, I love this man, I don't know him, but I follow him, and follow his podcast, everything he says. He doesn't really know Jesus all the way yet, but he reveres Jesus, he reveres him, but um, he, anyways, so I really like this guy, but, and he has a lot of good viewpoints to give, but I was listening to him recently, and he was kind of talking about, um, like, even though he acknowledges Jesus and he acknowledges God, he doesn't, like, he's not, like, a believer that says, you know, Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, the only way to the Father. So that's what kind of separates us all out because um, once you find someone who's, like, open to God, I would say he's open. I would say he's a seeker. But when you're open, that's great. But, but you've got to come to the point where you... Um, make Jesus the Lord of your life. And you can't just do that on your own. The Holy Spirit has to be gripping your heart and squeezing your heart. And all that to say, so I have to, you can take in other viewpoints, but your main viewpoint has to be the word of God. And you have to be so solid in that, that you can like take the good things that other people are saying that don't know Jesus all the way. And you can spit out the things that aren't of the Lord. So that's what I do with this guy a lot. So, um, and one thing he was talking about recently was, you know, talking about 
if we all like, you know, really come together and we get in the same mind and we um, really like kind of lose our identity in the midst of becoming all one, there basically won't be limits, you know, of what we can do. And I'm thinking, right. Yeah, that's true. Like, the Tower of Babel on the one hand. And then on the other hand, you have Christians. If we all come in one mind, things happen. But as he was saying it, I was like, no, no, no. That's actually not accurate. I don't, like, I don't have to lose my identity to in order to be in unity with other people. Um, conformity is not, a, is, is not a good thing if you're just conforming for the sake of conformity. Conformity to the image of Christ is a wonderful thing. You're conforming into his image every day if you know him by the power of the Holy Spirit. But you can be have unity without uniformity, right? We need to not we need to have our own identity even in the body, right? We're not homogenous. When you have groups that force people to be homogenous, it gets weird. It really gets weird. And there are countries that do this, but they can never, there will always be people that in the inside of their hearts question. It doesn't matter. As much as you have regimes that will try to keep people conformed, you will always have that free thinking nature that's been put in us by God that will rise up and say, down with the man. Like, it's not true what you're telling me. (laughs) You know what I mean? And so all that to say, I just wanted to talk about how that there's this whole idea of uh, individualism versus the collective. And the world likes to put us in these really opposite ends of the spectrum. Individualism is the right way. Collectivism is the right way. But God actually has the right way. And his way is stay who you are in terms of your personality. But leave your old life behind. Your identity is in me now. Identity and personality are not really the same thing. You can say, what? That sounds crazy. But if I identify as a Christian and my identity is in Christ, that's who calls all the shots of my life, should. But my personality and the things that I like and don't like is still going to be there. You know, the enemy tries to tell us if we come to Jesus that Everything that's cool about us will be stripped away or everything that's good about us. That, I mean, at least he's told me that before. But the truth is, no, he created you with the personality he gave you and he put it in you that way on purpose. He made you the way you are. So this is what I want us to hear today. We have to know how to keep our individuality in the midst of the collective because it is both. It is not picking one or the other. It was interesting. I didn't know Samoa. I didn't know that they had that proverb of it's not I, it's we. Um, but what it is, is we we make it Jesus first and then others second. You know, you've seen that I am second campaign a while back and then ourselves. But we don't lose ourselves. We're still ourselves. We're not going to become an amoeba-like faceless glob moving around the universe. That's not that's not helpful. I, so... As much as I as I like that that um, news guy, um, well, he's a lot of things, but that gentleman, I didn't agree with that. And um, and when I saw him leading a meditation, I was like, "Woo! I'm seeing a lot of like demonic new age things coming off the screen." I was like, "Got to get off that quick." But anyways, I just wanted to see <laughs> what he had. But I was like, "Woo! I can feel I can feel something that's not the spirit of God." But I pray for him to get saved. Because he's close, I think. Um, So I say that. Only the Lord knows. But I want us to read today. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 18, verses 18 through 20. And as you're turning there, I want to just give you the, the kind of the background of what's leading into why Jesus says this. Okay. Um, so right above verse 18, he's talking and he says, hey, if another believer they sin against you, go privately and tell them, you know, don't go to other people first, go privately and tell somebody if they upset you, they hurt you. And if they listen, they confess it, you've won them back. That's great, right? Okay, so he's given us a pattern. And this is not our main text, but you have to know what it is to lead into our main text. And then he says, but if they don't listen, take two or three witnesses, 
um, if they still don't listen, and we're talking about like somebody had sinned against you, so it's, you know, it's a big deal, you know, if they still don't listen, then take them before the church. And he said, and then if they don't listen to the church's decision, treat that person as a pagan or a corrupt tax collector. That's what Jesus said. So he's saying, if somebody's really causing that much problem, turn them out. So that's not like, that's not like somebody just, you know, hurt your feelings. This is like a big deal. Like something's built up and as much as you've tried to follow the way of the Lord, it's not happened. So that's the background of this. Okay. I want y'all to know why we need to know that is because it will make sense why then he talks about what he says in the next verse. Let's start reading there. It says, I tell you the truth, whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. I also tell you this, if two of you agree here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three gather together as my followers, I am there among them. Right? So it sounds, at first it's kind of like, whoa, that's strong words, Jesus, when he's doing the other part. But again, let, let's say, okay, let's say that somebody, let's say another believer came in my house and stole something of great value. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling, let's just say that. I mean, because maybe that person's struggling with stealing. Well, if I go to them, I'm like, hey, I need that heirloom back. And they're like, y'all are really going to be like, does this happen, Danielle? I don't, it's maybe somewhere. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to give something concrete because today we're actually trying to work with things that are concrete. We're getting, we're getting to that. I, I shouldn't be laughing about that. If somebody stole my heirloom, I would be really upset, you know. So, anyways, um, maybe there's a better example. <laughs> Let's go with it. So, I go to him. I'm like, hey, Jane, why did you steal my grandma's heirloom? And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't steal your grandma's heirloom. And I'm like, well, you were caught on the nanny cam stealing <laughs> the heirloom. And let's just say, like, she's like, no, like, no, I didn't do that. So I'm like, okay, well, Stewie, can you come with me? Because Jane's still not, Stewie and somebody. It feels, like, strong to take two, <laughs> two people with you, but whatever. Let's say I just took Stewie. She's like, no, I really didn't. But, but let's say the reason she's doing that. It's because she's actually struggling with, you know, stealing and lying. And she wants, let's say, because this kind of person is not just somebody you're having problems with. This is a person that's trying to cause problems in the church if they got to that point. So then you go to them again. They're like, no. So then I bring them before my church. I'm like, hey, like, you know, this person, she won't stop, you know. And then let's say she's like, well, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to admit it. I'm going to, you know, keep doing what I'm doing. Well, then. Okay, we'll see you later. We'll s when you want to confess it, come back. That's what Jesus is laying out. That sounds intense. We don't practice that in the church. Really, do we? Not much. I mean, I guess Jesus and Paul, like, really <laughs> had a similar way of dealing with those things. Um, let, me just, let me talk about a more serious one. Let's say a man was like, hey, I think you're hitting on my wife goes to a man in church. You know, that one's, nobody's laughing at that one because that one, it could happen. I'm sorry, the heirloom thing was far-fetched. Let's go with that one. <laughs> I don't know why that popped in my head. But, so let's say this man's like, hey, like, I've been noticing you've been, you know, making advances on my wife. You know, I need you to stop. And she's told me she knows you're doing it and it's upsetting her. Let's say he keeps doing it. Well, then I think that dude would maybe take two dudes with him. And be like, hey, like, stop, brother. And then, <laughs> yeah, some of the men in the room were like, we would make it stop right there. Um, let's say he was like, no, I'm not going to stop. I know who I am. You know, I know I'm hot, and I know I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I don't know who talks like that that's a man. Um, but let's just say you want to keep doing that. Well, at that point, you would bring him from the church. This is what Jesus says to do. I'm just telling y'all. What if we had done this? What I just want to ask a question. What if the church had done this from the beginning? Yeah. Well, they did do it in the beginning. They brought Ananias and Sapphira. Mm -hmm. And Peter's like, well, y'all lied to the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. They dropped dead. I told Stewie if it was modern days, the, the medical examiner, the coroner, would have to be like, yeah, their heart stopped. I don't, yeah. 
I mean, there was no foul play. Yeah. Just, you know, um, I say that. I don't know what exactly caused it. But my point is that they did start out like that. That's an extreme example. But that did start out like that. And then somewhere along the way, everybody got really human and decided to stop doing things like this so but if they but if the church brought that man and said hey look he's causing division like he won't stop you know making advances on that woman or that woman or that one you know or whatever then they would be like well then you need to go hang out outside the church because you're not going to eat with us because paul said don't even eat with them if they're like causing that kind of problem so that's a better example and so jesus is setting up a different system He's saying you don't deal with things like that in the church with the world. You deal with it in-house. And why would he do that? He's doing that because he's setting up a kingdom. He's setting up a completely different kingdom. And so that's why I needed to, like, give a better example um, than, I, than the other one to say, look, this is what he says. So that's why then he comes back around. And he says, I'm telling you the truth. Whatever you, meaning you plural, not just me on my own. That's fine if I want to pray it. That's fine if I want to do binding and loosing prayers on my own, which is the NKJV uh, language for uh, permitting and forbidding. But he's talking to us as a group. You, whatever you forbid here on earth, I'll, I'll forbid it in heaven. Jesus is saying that. So this is real. This is concrete. This is something that, like, we can hold. Okay? Now, but we don't do it. A lot of times we don't actually do his words. We just read them, and we're like, that's great. I believe it. But I don't do it. And what I'm saying is, and this isn't to make us feel bad. This is to encourage us. I'm, I feel, like, challenged and excited about this word. He's saying, hey, try it out. Do you all want to, you know, if, is this, if this group wants to forbid something, I mean, that's godly, obviously. <laughs> We're believers. If we want to forbid something together on earth, God's saying, I'll forbid it for y'all. And he said, if you want to, and whatever you permit on earth, whatever you're going to permit, I'll permit it in heaven. So obviously, God's not going to permit or forbid something that's not of him. But what he's saying is, if that, if that guy or girl that, let's say, like going with that adultery example, if a person were doing something like that, he's saying, hey, if y'all don't want it here, I don't want it here. He's that level of collaboration is very radical. It's very powerful with our God. He's saying, I trust y'all. Y'all have me in you. And in your courtroom, which uh, he's giving us a new courtroom. He's saying, like, court is in session. He's telling us that court is in session. What do y'all want? What do y'all want me to do for you? Permit it or forbid it. You know, bind it or loose it, and then I'll do it for you. Okay, and that's a powerful. So and then I'm going to read just again a little bit down. It said, I also tell you this. I'm just repeating what we just read a second ago. I also tell you this. If two of you agree here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. Even just two of us. If just two of us touch. I like how um, the NKJV says it. Let's see. Maybe that's in a different different version of that. But anyways, there's another thing, another place that says if you touch, touching anything, you know, it shall be done. So I think of holding hands and agreeing in faith and prayer for God to do something. And then he says, for where two or three gather together as my followers, I am there among them. Um, I like the NKGV. It says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Okay, so what we need to do, and what I'm, um, I'm feeling challenged by this, and I'm, I know that the Lord gave me this to bring today, is I'm wanting us to understand our different plane of living. A plane is a place of existence. It's not just a th something that you fly in. Another definition of plane is, you know, a, a place of existence. We live in a different existence. We're in the world. We're not of the world. And we're not supposed to be taken out of the world until Jesus comes back to get us. Jesus said, I'm going to leave you there on purpose. We're left here as salt and light, but we don't live like the world. 
we live in a different kingdom. So you have a different person and I have a different person that we appeal to. And it's always God. It's not just somebody out there. So the first person I go to or you go to if we're believers should be Jesus. So if we're having a problem with something that something's not going well, go to him. And this is telling us get with each other and take the request to God. That, that there is, you know, you've heard people say there's power in agreement. This is what that's talking about. And I'm just saying that the way this verse popped in my mind differently when I was studying it was that, you know, you've got this global body of Christ. Well, today, you know, let's, like um, if we're, we're talking like, I'm just going to make up somewhere, Australia the Australian church has different little churches everywhere. We have American churches, different little churches. They're going to have different things that they need to bind and loose that's particular to their context, right? Yeah. So the way I saw this happening was like, hey, whatever you different churches need me to do for you because you know what's good for you, I'll do it. Just get together and choose what you want. Get together into the courtroom of heaven and make a verdict. Make a judgment. He's saying, you're the referees, give the judgment call. He's giving us more power, and we're leaving a lot on the table. And I'm just saying today, y'all, let's not leave anything on the table. Let's take it all. Because Jesus didn't die for us to take a part of it. He died so we could take everything on the table. You know, when Jesus was telling his disciples all this for three years, you know, he's pouring in, he knew that they were getting only a certain amount of what he was saying and he wasn't worried about it why because somebody else was coming after him the spirit of god and he knew when the spirit of god came the spirit of god would take all the gaps of knowledge that they had and start plugging in boom 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 after the day of pentecost so he became that internal teacher and guide that would take what jesus had told them and say remember when jesus said that this is what he meant now, we didn't get to walk with Jesus, obviously, in the flesh. So we rely completely on the Holy Spirit. So churches should definitely not push the Holy Spirit out. You know, I hope that they wouldn't, but they shouldn't because he's their lifeline their, to Jesus. He's Jesus. He's Christ agent on earth. So my point is he would come and fill in everything that they didn't get yet. Just a side note, I was reading in John 16 also this week, and I was thinking, <laughs> so Jesus is like, okay, I'm going to go back to my father, because that's where I came from. I'm going to go back. And he's like really like clearly telling him, and he's like, I know I've spoken to you a lot figuratively, but now I'm going to speak to you literally. And they suddenly go, thank you for speaking to us literally, because, you know, we were really waiting on that, and now we know that you're, you're who you say you are. Do you ever want to eye roll for Jesus where you're like, oh, my gosh. Do you ever just want to roll your eyes for Jesus where you're like, did they really say that to him? You know, I don't know. Did Jesus roll his eyes? Probably. <laughs> I think sometimes he did. Maybe he's like, oh. Because <laughs> he's like, then because the, this is why. Because he goes, oh, do you believe now? That's what he asks him. <laughs> he's like, so, so you believe now? Now that I said that? Not like when I fed 5,000 or raised the dead. Or any of the other million miracles I did just now because I just said it to you clearly. Now you believe that I am I am who I am. Um, so now people may say, do you think you're better than disciples? I'm like, no, I know I'm not. I just know that my words haven't been recorded the way theirs were. <laughs> and they have more honor because of that. Um, so I'm just saying, like, I know I'm not better. I just know that they are the ones we get to read about. Um, but... So, you know, we need to understand, like I said earlier, we're not the individual solely. We're not the collective solely. We're the, we are the personal identity in Christ in the body. Retain, retaining individual, individuality in this full surrender to Christ and his body. So when I want to go back to that because when you get into that being able to be who you are but in the body – that's p more powerful than either individuality or collectivity because then you're like who you are, but you're in this huge band of believers. So it's really cool and powerful. 
Um, it's basically like the original like version of like a superhero movie. You know, where they're like, this person does that, this person does that, this person does that. It's like, yeah, well, that was actually the disciples, you know, doing all these mighty things, these apostles, and then now us getting to be a part of that. Um, But when we are all working in our individual identities in the collective, then Christ is completely elevated. And we are completely joined with his bride. Okay, so... Um, but back to this, this earthly courtroom that is, is really becomes heaven's courtroom. This happens in circles of believers. Like I said earlier, and we're a circle of believers today. And when I say circle of believers, I mean a church. I mean, sometimes we have these like high minded definitions, but really what he's just saying is when you get together in my name and you're going to pray, I'm there with you. When you get together in my name, and you're coming to serve me and honor me, I'm there in the middle of you. Okay, so there's another, there's another passage of scripture I want to read to you, three verses, or three or four, and it's literally just the chapter before, in Matthew 17, verses 24 through 27. I'm going to read this one out of the NKJV, and it says, um, well, I'll, I'll give you a chance to turn there. It's kind of neat, though, how this one and chapter 18 are so close in the things that he's talking about, so you can see that the way Matthew wrote this, you can see that a message is really trying to come through from the Lord about the kingdom. But it says uh, in verse 24, when they had come to Capernaum, those who received the temple tax came to Peter and said, does your teacher not pay the temple tax? He said, yes. And when he had come into the house, Jesus anticipated him saying, What do you think, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth take customs or taxes? From their sons or from strangers? Peter said to him, from strangers. And Jesus said to him, then the sons are free. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, lest we offend them, go to the sea, cast in a hook, and take the fish that comes up first. And when you have opened its mouth, you'll find a piece of money. Take that and give it to them for me and you. (laughs) So... Like, yeah, it's, if people were ever like, oh, they're so rebellious, they're doing what they want. It's like, no, I mean, Jesus still made sure everything was okay. Um, the reason I left when I was reading that is I imagine Peter just like walking, like he's just doing his own thing. He's like walking to go to where all Jesus' and disciples are. And those temple tax people come up to him and they're like, hey, do you and your, your you know, rabbi pay? And he's like, yes. I mean, I see him kind of like, yeah, right? We do, right? I mean, I kind of feel like he just said yes, and maybe they didn't. I mean, that's what I get from it. I could be wrong. That's just my own. Be, be, the reason I say that is because then Jesus, you know, because Jesus knew what was going on since he's God before Peter got to the door. Because then Jesus is like, hey, what do you think about this? And he's like, okay, we'll go give them this to pay for us. So I'm like, either they had been paying and they were late that time. There's a reason they're coming. If they had been caught up with their temple tax, they would not come and ask Do y'all not pay temple tax? That's why it cracked me up because I could see Peter being like, yes, leave me alone. Yeah, we pay tax and I'm going in and he's not going to tell anybody. (laughs) He's not going to talk about it. I think he's literally going to fib and then go and hang out with his bros. And then Jesus is like, hey, Peter. He's like, Peter, we got to deal with the heart here, man. But teachable moment. You live in a different kingdom. So... Isn't that amazing? He says, who do kings take? Uh, the NK, um, NLT says it, you know, like, who do the kings take from uh, those they've conquered or their citizens? And then and in that version, Peter says, well, the ones they've conquered. And then Jesus says, yeah, so the citizens are free. So whether you're a son, you know, a native son of the kingdom, or you're a citizen of the kingdom, you're free. Mm-hmm. What that means is, When something like this temple tax that's really not from God, really what Jesus is trying to say, look, yeah, this is a thing we do. And it it is commanded. It was in the Old Testament that you took a temple tax. So he's not, I'm not saying that God was saying through this moment that that was an evil thing. But I think he was saying, look, what are you under? Are you under man's system or a law that was created before? Or are you under Jesus in this new kingdom and what he's trying to say is you're under a new kingdom um you know when people are afraid they'll 
they'll do things they wouldn't do otherwise. Sometimes when people are afraid, they'll lie, they'll they'll end up falling to sin or doing things. I think really something I learned from this is Jesus is saying, hey, Peter, don't be afraid. You're not under that system. So we'll go ahead and so that we don't offend him, we'll pay it, but you're free. How does that go into Matthew 18? Let me tell you how it goes into it. He's saying you're of a different kingdom. Since you are, carry that over to 18 and just have these judicial moments where you make judgments within the group, you know? Um, And, you know, do things to where when you come together, you can actually bind and loose or permit and forbid and or forbid and permit. He's really trying to get them to begin seeing themselves living in a different place. A new, because the thing is, when you come into Christ, you come into a new kingdom, a new language, a new culture, everything changes. You actually are living in two places at once. You're living in the kingdom of God and you're living on earth. You're still obeying. Hey, Jesus also says, give, you know, render to Caesar, give to Caesar what's his, meaning if it's a government, if it's like a, like a earthly law, do it. Just, you know, take care of it. He's not really that concerned with that. That's an afterthought for Jesus. And he knows it's an afterthought because when he when you're following the king of glory, who is benevolent and wonderful and righteous in all of his ways, you're going to do right by other people on earth. So his main concern is that you and I understand the other kingdom we live in. We don't have to try to understand the world's kingdom. That comes naturally, unfortunately. Because of the sin nature. And even Stewie talked about it. Sometimes we're in the right side up kingdom. And then we have to be like, wait, I live in the upside down kingdom. I live where um, children that come to Jesus, they're humble. They're greatest in the kingdom. And not just adults, me, who wants to like not pay attention to someone, you know, like a little one or whatever. That's just, and that's also earlier in Matthew 18. But my point is I want us to begin to, sh- to migrate over to where we step up into the kingdom. And if we're like down here thinking something or doing something, we're like, wait, no, I can step up into this kingdom I actually live in and live on that plane and really let the Lord take care of those needs. And I hope that makes sense to everybody. Um, but now there's uh, something to kind of tie this together as we kind of we're going to go and do this activity as a group about this this experiment here in a minute. But um, it's not really an experiment in the sense that we don't know that there will be something that comes out of it. Because, but God is the constant, and that's why. We're the variable. He's a constant. Um, that's what I mean by experiment. But I want to tell you all something that happened to me. So way earlier in the week, I, like Matthew 18 kept coming to me, right? This verse that we're talking about. And I was like, okay, that's probably what we're going to talk about on Sunday. I don't really know yet, but that's what kept coming back. Well, then in the middle of the night, I don't know. It was Tuesday or Wednesday, maybe. I didn't feel well. I'd gone to bed feeling bad, kind of, and then I woke up, and I felt the peace of Jesus, like, in my room. I was like, oh, this is wonderful. Thank you, Lord. And when I did, I heard in my spirit, molecule, (laughs) this is going to sound so crazy, molecule saturation dew point. And I was like, what? You know, it's like, what is that supposed to mean? (laughs) Because I knew it was the Lord speaking to me because his peace had come over me. And I was like, I'm not a science person. (laughs) So this is really crazy. So that's what I, and I was like, okay, molecule saturation dew point. And I fell back asleep. And I woke up in the morning and I was like, Stewie, I heard some really odd words from the Lord last night. And we need to talk about it because I don't fully understand this. Um, But when I woke up, when I went to tell Stewie, I looked at my phone and I had received like a a YouTube thing from One for Israel. from some subscribed to them. And it was like, heaven's rain. And I was like, okay. So like I'm definitely going to like search this out. Um, But anyways, I ended up talking to Stewie. And I did some research and prayed. But here's the thing. A molecule, I'm just going to give you, y'all may already know, but I had to look it up again. It's a group of atoms bonded together. 
It represents the smallest fundamental unit of a chemical compound that can take part in a chemical reaction. And the other thing that happened when I heard molecule saturation dew point, the other thing that happened that night is I saw written in front of me H2O. So I was like, okay, well then that's a water molecule, right? Well, if you remember, I don't know if you remember this from school, you know, H2O, remember what it looks like? It's got the two, it's like the upside down Mickey Mouse or whatever, but it's got the two hydrogen on the outside and the oxygen in the middle. And when I saw that, the Lord brought Matthew 18, 18 to me. He said, where two or three are gathered, I am there in the midst of them. I was like, whoa, total like mind blown. And he was like, I'm like, so you're the oxygen atom and we're the hydrogen atoms. And it's like Stewie said, hydrogen is very volatile on its own, but oxygen, so life-giving. When you put all that together, suddenly it's like water. Another life-giving thing comes out. And so I felt like he was saying, hey, I'm the oxygen. Y'all are gathering around me as a hydrogen, and we're creating something. And we're the smallest unit, a molecule is the smallest unit that can ha make that chemical reaction. And I'm just telling you, we can make a chemical reaction in the sense of the spiritual today. Okay, and it's going to happen through agreement. And we actually, here in a minute, we're going to decide what we want to agree on. We're going to make a decision where we say we're going to come together and we're going to actually have one thing that we're going to pray over and we're going to do some binding and loosing. Okay, because what I'm expecting is that we'll see a visible result. So I'm stepping out in some major faith and I'm inviting y'all to step with me. So I'm not the only one stepping. <laughs> but so we can see an actual visible, visible response from what happens. But so um, now, you know, water is the building block of life, right? In our bodies, what is it, 70 or 80 percent? 75? 70 something. Yeah. Then you look at the earth and how much water. You look at a plant that's dead can suddenly spring to life. Um, there's a scripture that talks about a stump, you know, coming back. The Israel, right? It's a stump. Uh, but water hits it and you start getting a little bit of life there. I'm going to tell you about dew point real quick. Dew point, Stewie had to really help me with this one. <laughs> I didn't know how confusing science and weather can be. But anyways, dew point is, because dew point and saturation point kind of go together. Dew point is the saturation point for water when vapor turns to liquid. So when we see the liquid come, right? And hot, hot holds, hot air holds more water, right? Cold air, less water. A big sponge versus a little sponge. So is our, our hearts and spirits hot towards God and his things or are we cold? How much can we hold, right? And how much is our spirit hot towards the kingdom and revival? How much can we hold? The more we hold, there's going to be eventually, it's going to tip over and water is going to come, right? That's revival rain because rain is with revival, you know? So I feel like he's speaking to us, be, these, be this molecule, do this with me, you know, let that saturation point as a group build until you're reaching that dew point and then water comes. And you, like Stewie said, you can either have a dew point where there's dew on the ground or you can have a dew point where the clouds, the torrential rain, pour, rain uh, storm comes. But um, I, I want us to be that big sponge, you know, that vapor turns to liquid. Um, and so I hope all that made sense. I don't really... I, I don't, I mean, I think it's really cool that God would use something that's completely out of my own personal range of understanding and wheelhouse, as people say, um, that science is not my thing. Um, I think it's great. I just don't know a lot about it. But, but when I began to see what he was saying, I was like, whoa. So what I really got from that is, you know, what do we know about science? It's empirical. It's like math, right? 
you have something you can hold, you can see. You can't, I don't care what our culture is doing right now, you can't really politicize math and science. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you live in the book 1984, you can politicize <laughs> math and change 2 plus 2 f equals 4 to 2 plus 2 equals 5, but not in real life. Again, our, our truth in our hearts will always rise up and say, no, the sky's blue. There's clouds or there's not clouds. You know what I mean? That's science. That's, so I, I feel like God's wanting to say, let's try him, test him, not test in a negative way, but let's take him at his word. That's what I'm going to say. Let's take him at his word of what he said about binding and loosing, and let's do that together. So we're going to do that today. Um, I don't know if, well, we'll have to do something to where this can be recorded too, but um, I want us to get in a circle because remember, we got to, you know, agree. Agreement to me really comes in uh, holding hands and seeing. It can be verbally. It doesn't have to be holding hands. But I want us to hold hands because we're going to be a molecule around Jesus. Okay. <laughs> and, um, and by the way, the verse of the day on the Bible app, I don't know if y'all saw that this morning, but I love it. It said, Jesus said, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart. So that's that's powerful too. Like that's what's going to happen with the spirit. Um, so yeah, we're going to get in a circle. And what we're going to do is we're going to decide on what we want to ask the Lord for. We're going to, um, now we can have other prayer after, but I want us to choose one thing to pray for that we decide on, and then we're going to bind and loose. Now, if anybody doesn't want to do this, that's totally fine. You can, like, just watch uh, those of us who get in a circle and pray. Um, so there's no pressure either way. But then we can also pray for all kinds of other needs. Um, but I want us to do choose a topic or choose a need that we can see verifiable results within the week or so. Okay, so... Let's think. You know, I had I had an, an idea, but does did anybody did anything pop into anybody's mind that we can pray for uh, as a group that affects us as a as a group? Because this is the group moment here. Or I can tell you what I had. How about that? And then if y'all are like, I have something a little different, tell me because I, I want this to be collaborative. I want us to ask the Lord to bring people. Okay, good. So <laughs> the fact that other people are thinking that I'm like, that's confirmation that we're going to do that. And we're going to bind and loose, or you can say um, forbid and permit. I just, I learned it, bind and loose. Um, we're going to bind the things that we believe are keeping that from happening. And we're going to loose the things that we're asking God to loose for us. Okay. And so then what's going to happen when we do that is more people will be here next Sunday because that's what the word says. And why not just live the word? And you know what? <laughs> it's on Jesus. We're just doing his thing. Um, and I think it's exciting to live him at his word and because he wants us to, he doesn't want us to leave anything on the table and we do a lot and we don't have to. We do not have to leave anything on the table, um, especially since the Holy Spirit came. Um, so maybe we can all just get in a circle here. Yeah, did you? Yeah. I just I was in one of my wild moods, and I go, come, people, come on. <laughs> where are you? Yeah, where are you? So exactly. About our group. Yeah, you're talking, talking about, about people. All of those yeah. out there that yeah. need to come. Yes. yes. Yeah. Amen. So, Amen. <laughs> it's That's the Lord. Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a confirmation. It, it is. is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. 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 And, and then we're going to do that. And then after we pray that in the circle, we can pray for other needs too. So, because we're here to pray for each other and see God move. Um, so, yeah, let's gather up. Anybody who wants to be in the prayer circle, who, whoever wants to be in the, the um, spiritual science lab, <laughs> I could say. Um, and if you're like, hey, I don't know if I have faith for that, that's okay. Just don't just maybe set out this one if you're not sure if you have faith for it. I don't mean that bad. I'm just saying. Um, yeah. We're all They're on a cross that made for sinners. Do we see your eyes? For every curse is blood atoned. We're going to pray that. One 
final breath and it was finished But not the end we could For the Lord, and we can worship. Yeah, I've been hearing people say, thank you, Jesus. Let's worship until, until Stewie gets here. Praise Jesus, Lord. thank you, Lord. You're the oxygen in the middle. Oh, We're bonded to you, Jesus. We're inseparable from you, Jesus. We are your, your body. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. All authority and power in your hands, Jesus. You are so mighty. You are so awesome. You are so powerful. You are so beautiful, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for being in our midst. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you. We bow before you. Yes, we worship you, Jesus. Thank you for who you are. We feel your presence. You are with us. You are in the midst of us. We look to you, King Jesus. We cast our crowns in your feet. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Yes. We honor you. We lay everything out before you, Jesus. Jesus. We lay it all out in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's none like you, Jesus. So, Lord, we worship you. Yes, You are the bonding agent. We're bonded to you. We're yours. We belong to you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And, Lord, we just, we don't despise small beginnings. We don't despise it. We love it. We love everyone here. We're one. And we don't despise small numbers. We thank you for the numbers. Lord, we're just simply going to come into agreement Yes, Lord. for you to send who you desire to come to Evergreen. To send the hungry, the spiritually hungry that will lay it on the line. To send those who are hurting. To send those who want to meet you. To send those who do know you and want to operate in the revival reign. We ask you to send, we agree for you to send new people even this week. Even that Sunday we'll see new people. New faces we've never seen before. We agree right now. So church, y'all just, yes, you're, that's great. Let's, yeah, let's just say that. Carrie said, we're in agreement. Yes, we're in agreement right now. We agree. Yes, thank you, Lord. We agree with you. Yes, Lord. And so right now, Lord, I just want you to hear your church. We're going to make ju judgments now of your, your, your word. And we're going to begin to permit and, and forbid or bind and loose, Lord. So I just I want to say your your people, church, y'all just start binding and loosing and we're going to now, Father God, we want to bind you up. The fear is banned. Yes. We bind up pride. Yes. And we bind up self-focus that has kept us from reaching out to people and inviting them. Yes. When we've been afraid of what we would look like or what they would think or what are they going to do if they step in and we're falling out the spirit. Yes. It's all about being too focused on self and we repent of that. Yes, in the name Lord, of Jesus, the name we of Jesus. bind up those fleshly yes, things. Lord, and what we permit oh, in the yes, name of Jesus yes, is God. that you are bigger than that. And it's yes. not about us. It's, it's not, not about us. It's right. about you. That's right. And so That's we true. permit yes. this week that we are going to allow the Spirit of God yes. to come upon us. Yes. In yes. the name Lord. of Jesus. Yes, you are yes. under our feet, Satan. Yes. And we yes. are not going to be yes. self-focused. We bind it up. And Holy Spirit, we give you <gasps> we give you permission to flow yes, through us. Yes, to flow through yes, us. Yes, we are yours, oh yes, God. Yes, 
body. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Can we give that? Can we permit that? Yes. Thank you, God. Lord God, we bind up complacency in our city, Father, and just tradition. Things that keep people in their lanes, God. We we say, and I agree with religion. Carrie was saying, God, there are people right around us that need the life-giving river that Evergreen is in this city, God. And we call them out from that complacency, from that lethargy. We call them out and say, come out. Come out and come into the flow of what God is doing. Lord, we we need that. God, this, this, there are, again, there are people that are stuck in their ways. Young people that are stuck and that have been they've been called into another flow, God, that is, is evil and is drawing them away from you, God. And we call to them to come out, to be separated out from that, God, to come into the light, come into the kingdom, Lord, come into the flow. There are people all around us that need to be in here and be a part of what specifically Evergreen does and a part of your body in this city, God. And so we do call them out. I, I say agree. Let there be more people here next week in Jesus' name. God, those that, again, those that that are lost, that are hurting, and that that need you, God, that need you, that need all the supply that you have, Father. Thank you, Lord. 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 Bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We just lose that. People that are blinded to this location, mm-hmm. yes. but their eyes will be open. open. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. We Jesus. bind that blindness. Yes, Lord. Eyesight. Yes, yes. Lord. Lord. Spiritual eyesight. Yes. And they will absolutely zero in, in and focus in on yes. this tucked yes. in place. Lord. That's yes, right. Yes, oh, right. Oh, Thank you, Lord. And Lord, all those people that I have seen on Sundays come up and start to open the store, and then they look and they're like, oh, wait, I'm in the wrong place. Oh, you're in the right place. Oh, no, you're in the right place. Yes. And I pray a quadrupling of every hand that was laid on that door when they started to open it, and they're like, oh, no, wait a minute. That's not where I thought I was going. Yes. I think that's what Linda's saying right there. Yes. So yes, we Lord. thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you. You're in the right place. Oh, yes, yes. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Oh, yes. oh Lord. God. And I just de- Oh, thank you, Lord God. We are in the corner, which means we are anchoring the other places around us. That's right. Amen. That's right. Yes. 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 Thank you, God. Yes. 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 People, yes, and they're going, Oh, <laughs> that's sure. what yes, we need to go God. see. Yes, oh, Lord. let's go Lord. look and see what that's Lord. Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Let it be, Jesus. Let it be, God. Thank you, Lord. Did you have to oh. just, just, I wanted to just declare, God, that as. As what you you yes, said, Jesus, God. in Matthew 24, that in the end, many would fall yes, away yes. and the, their love would grow cold. God, is that is that is happening right now, yes. God? That means there are empty Jesus. seats on the train. Jesus. And yes, I pray God. that you would rise us up yes, evangelistically, yes, yes, God, yes, that God. we would have the gospel on our lips, yes, God, yes, and the love of yes, Jesus God. in our hearts, God, that we would go out even oh, as a smaller yes, number and we yes, would bring people in, yes, God, as well, you, that we would live lives that people would say, why are you so happy? Why yes, do you why yes. do you smile all the time? What's yes, going on? Amen. And we would just by the way we live, we would yes, draw people unto joy, you Lord, and into this Lord, house, Lord. Father. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Lord. God, we there is there are Lord. people that we need the Lord, Lord God. Oh, Jesus, help us to fill those spots. As many foolishly fall away, God, there are many places to fill, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Well, I, I would ask if we can agree that, you know, this is this is us stepping out in faith. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, it okay? is. And so when I go to James and I read about faith, uh, James 2.14, Mm-hmm. And those sections called faith without works is dead mm-hmm. yes. what good is it my brothers if someone says he has faith but does not have works That's right. can that Step can up. that faith save save him oh, if a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food that's a horizontal thing okay? yes yes if they're if they're 
uh, yes. poorly clothed Jesus. and lacking in food, Thank and one you of you Lord. says, "Go in peace, mm-hmm. be warmed and filled." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Without giving them the things they need, yes. right? They Lord, need a coat us. and they need a, a yeah. warm give meal. Them what they yeah. Need, All right. That's yes, not Lord. a. It's yes. spiritual because yes. it's in the Bible, yeah. but it's it's a yes. horizontal Jesus. thing. Yes. And yes. what I'm saying Lord. is, we can. James Lord. is Lord. teaching. I'm, you know, yes. teaching. Allow. There's an opportunity for us to learn. Yes, Lord. Faith. Yes, Lord. And I'm, I'm believing yes. for more people Jesus. to be here. Yes. Mm-hmm. And if this is faith, I'm saying that I believe I'm gonna go and mm-hmm. do the horizontal part of that. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. I'm not Lord. trying to mix works in place mm-hmm. of faith. That's James right. is saying. Faith without works is dead. Right, right, so right. Thank you, Lord. We are being called into mm-hmm. faith, mm-hmm. and thus we are innately being called into action. Yes, that's right. We're called that's into right. works you, to Lord. do something, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to do you, a work for the Lord. Yes, Lord. that's exciting. I'm, yes. I'm excited about that. Yes, so, thank you, Lord. Lord Help us to not do f- works without faith, right, but right. help us to do works inspired by faith. Yes. Lord. So help us to Jesus, go and give out right every now, invitation Lord. card. Yes. Tell God, every single Lord. person, yes. Yes. hey, Lord. we're just really believing yes. for people Jesus. to come to church this week. Yes. Yes. Would you happen yes. to be interested yes. in coming yes. by chance? Yes. Yes. Well, yeah, I've been actually waiting for someone to ask me, invite me for yes. months. I don't know Thank what you, the Jesus. answers we're going to get. Yes. We're not worried about that. We are no. We are. We're concerned with what we're called to do. The scope of this assignment. Yes. Is to go. The homework for the lab is to go and invite everybody. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. My gosh, yes, it's Lord. in there. Yes. So, Lord, Thank you, lead us and guide us. Lead us and guide us. Um, yes, God. I'm just gonna. After church, I, I know, encourage you guys read James too. Yes. Get in yes. there and let the Lord, uh, yes. the Holy you, Spirit, Lord. reveal what He wants to. Yes, mm-hmm. Jesus. Let it be agreed upon today. Yes, and, the, and then y'all are saying, in the courtroom of the Lord, yes. let us render a verdict that more people shall come. Yes. And then it's for the rest of us to believe it. sort yes. of like mm-hmm. adhere to that agree. Uh, uh, Yes. Like agreement. Yeah. Yeah. To just carry it yes, out, basically. Lord. It's yes. been decided. Yes. Now we just need to yes, de- act in accordance with it. Yes. yes Lord. It's been yes, law has been signed into into effect, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and now we all just have to follow the law. Yes. yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Thank you, Lord. God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. And I just want to, you know, find like um, when Carrie said earlier, any fear when like if we go to talk to someone. Lord, let fear drop yes. in the name of Jesus, yes. and we yes. loose tongues. I loose yes. our tongue, yes. and my tongue, yes. Yes. in the name of Jesus, yes. to just yes. say the right word at the oh. right oh. moment. Oh, yeah. yes. And Lord, we want to pray that that words of knowledge, words of prophecy, that that um, words just um, of wisdom, that your gifts would flow through us as we invite people yes. as well. That we would heal people in the name of Jesus, that we would pray and people would be made whole. And so, Lord, we just want to keep, I'm going to make some more room here. Just want to bind and loose anything else, God, that anybody has on their hearts. Yes. We're evergreen. Um, I've got another thing, but I just wanted to do a PSA. I'm going to go check the online chat. If anybody online has something, you can type it up and I'll uh, be your voice Mm -hmm. here in the group. Um, But something I want to bind is this COVID, you know, it's normal to to have a sparsely populated place. Yeah, yeah. It's it feels awkward and weird and unsafe to have too many people around. Mm -hmm. We I want to bind that right now. If you guys want to agree with that, that's right. We bind that spirit that that has. It's a fear. It's just this like uh, sense of um, complacency, like Keith said. You know just partly full is good is full enough mm-hmm. no yes, we disagree with that jesus. right now yes. and we yes. bind yes. that in the name yes. of jesus lord. yes lord yes lord we lose people coming lord thank you jesus thank you lord thank you lord anybody else have anything as we're just gonna keep waiting on the lord here i have something that's kind of i feel like personally has hindered me from like being more mm-hmm. bold and inviting people and yes, um, Jesus. I mean even just like professing my faith. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and that is just like I want divine um, compromise. Yes, um, yes, and yes. all of us. Yes. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
loose our feet, God. Yes, we loose we our do. hands yes, and we, we loose do. our tongues, yes, God. Jesus, May we be your all. hands and your we feet and your mouthpiece, God. Yes, May we be Jesus. your instruments, God. Yes, I pray yes, that the gospel of Jesus Christ would be like a fire inside that if we yes, try to hold on to it, it will it will just it burn will us up. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Were, we, we just cannot keep it in, God. For our own safety, we can't keep it in, God. Be that in our in our lives, God. Hallelujah, God. Use us to bring many into your kingdom, God. I pray, God, for an inheritance, God, of the lost, God. Oh, hallelujah, Father. Give us that, Lord God. We agree right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We agree. Thank Fire you, being Jesus. shut up in the bones. Yes, yes. yes. that's Jeremiah, right. Of those that's right. in Jeremiah who yes, was talking God. about it himself. And so Thank God, you, I pray, yes. I loose that Lord. fire. That fire, yes. 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 Yes.
and when the cold, when the front comes and it's time to rain, mm-hmm. that we will, you will find us yes. very, very large yes. sponges, yes. as Daniel yes. uh, accurately yes. described. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just a couple quick pictures to expand on that. Stepping up onto a horse that traditionally, those that did that, they were carrying messages. Mm. They were wow. sounding alarms. That's true. Yeah. And God, wow. let us do yes, that. Lord. God, let we us be it. your messengers. It, let yes. us sound yes. the alarm. Yes, Jesus is coming yes. back yes. soon. Yes. Get on the boat. Get yes. on the ship. Yes. Come along. Be a part of what he's doing. Right. Yes. Thank you, God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And we need to bind Jesus. every, um, I know we sort of touch on this, but. We need to bind every force, every idea, every habit, mm-hmm. every um, yeah, cognitive good. thought, yeah. every yes. subconscious yes. Yes. temptation or Lord thought that yes. seems yes. to pop yes. in from right. nowhere. Right. Right. The you world of the flesh and the you devil, the, devil. the demonic, yes. we bind, yes. we bind yes. the, the world yes. and it's... Yes, um, yes. And it's just, uh, yes, just Jesus, yes. volume, if you will. It's it's so loud. We bind that volume, yes. turn it, yes. it down, and we you bind our flesh. But we remind yes. ourselves now. We inform God. our spirit man is going to yes. lead yes. our flesh, That's and we're going right. to say. We yes. have been bought by a price. Right. Oh, our life is not Jesus. our own. Yes. Lord, yes. we, we oh, want to bind all these things bind that are inhibiting at will or could inhibit, yes. Lord, what we're loosing. Yes. Thank you, yes. Jesus. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Forge us together as a yes, community. Lord. Yes, God. Yes, just like our hands. Or help us to remind each other we are called this week. This mm-hmm. is a different special. Oh, we're yeah. stepping up this week. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. We feel tempted to not to, to miss the train or, or to oh. miss the boat like you. Mm-hmm. We'll just get up. We got to do it. We got to do That's it right. this week. Help right. us to just get really engaged this mm-hmm. week. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus God. Name. Thank you, God. Was there anything else, Keith, or is that the one? No. Okay. I just I would Thank say you, finally Lord. I would just say God, Thank we lose victory. Yeah. Wow. We God, we lose victorious right. life. We, God. We, lose we let it be yes. that we victory begin to take ground. Yes. 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 Yes agreeing mm-hmm. so it's like it's mm-hmm. like no matter who's praying we're all mm-hmm. doing yeah. something yeah it's not yeah. just like one person at a time right. thing. It's, yeah we're so in it i think that's really exciting yeah, yeah. 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 hallelujah Dad, did you God. have anything to find always not that you have to <laughs> 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 well when i was uh, uh i guess not uh, i didn't come to the lord until i was uh 19. <laughs> No, 20, late 20. But anyway, the, uh, uh, we had a lady in our church that uh, chose uh, uh, three or four people to train to be Sunday school teachers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she chose me as one of them. And uh, so I went through her program. We went through her program. And I remember uh, there was nobody in our class. I mean, I was I was appointed as teacher of this class. There wasn't anybody in there, you know. So I thought, hey, you know. Um, but I walked in there. Uh, I used to uh, donate working on the church, you know, stuff like that. But so one Saturday, I was up there working around the church. And I love to be around the church because it's so comforting. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, as a new believer you know you need a lot of support you know? mm-hmm. so I was there working and feeling good about the Lord and so I walked in my sex school room and I said Lord I said I speak uh, I speak people to this class mm-hmm. yes. in the name of Jesus tomorrow mm-hmm. uh, this class is going to be filled mm-hmm. so I forgot about it you know, I went home and went home and you know, did everything 
So the next morning, you know, I'm always when I got coffee, I was kind of, I'm not kind of slow sometimes, you know, as far as I don't get in a hurry, you know what I mean? Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I was kind of one of the last ones to get there. And so when I walked up the classroom, I didn't even think about what I prayed. Yeah. And when I opened the door, there was four couples in there. Wow. Um, that is four huge. new couples yeah. in there. Mm -hmm. And I, I went, man, you know. <laughs> and then I, then I was going, it really freaked me out because I thought, well, Lord, I, I, I don't know if I can do this or not. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you gotta uh, teach. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> because all these people were, you know, I've always felt like people were, yeah. when I looked at my peers, they always seemed like they were over that one. You ever yeah. felt that way? Yeah, yeah. exactly. You know, I still love three students and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, um, I was in there and I thought, oh, man. But man, the Lord is really mm -hmm. blessed. Yes, and, thank you, Jesus. Uh, we went from nothing to about uh, we probably had about uh, ten to twelve people. Mm -hmm. uh, Praise God! Just That's awesome. Immediately, and yes. I think that this is. I agree with. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we agree with that. everybody here, I agree with. Yeah, agree with Danielle that, that you know that God's going to bless this. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Really is. yes. And we, we, all we have to do is just uh, right. trust him and believe him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. And, uh, yeah. and, and you know, the, the science room yeah. experiment you were talking about, you know, you always see movies where the experiment went wrong and it blew up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But this is the experiment that went right. Yes. And we're going to blow yeah. up. Yeah. We're going to explode. Yeah, we're yeah. going to discover something new. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's I mean, good. The, I must explain this to Danielle. It's it's in in the um, the charismatics and the charismatic side of me is like, oh yeah, we get yeah. real ju just yeah. juicy. You talk about the atmosphere being charged, yeah. and we're all yeah. getting real, right? yeah. and that's great. Yeah, it um, and, but it's a true it's a truth. I mean, yeah. when the air is, is warm and moist, mm -hmm. yeah. the cold front comes. It squeezes that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. When the time's right, you know, mm -hmm. the the have, the clouds give up their water. Mm -hmm. I mean, they give mm -hmm. up their they are water, but they turn right. into mm -hmm. you know, liquids. Yeah. Liquid. It's just they, mm -hmm. they, they, um, critical mass. They have yeah, to just sure. obey mm -hmm. the law. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Amen. Amen. There, it, it never doesn't happen. Yeah. Right? right? Yeah. I mean, it always must happen. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, it reminds me, Danielle's always praying, like, you know, give up your sons and daughters in north to south, east and west. You know, it's the just winds. like, yeah. the winds, yeah. like, give them up. Like, yeah. they're out there. Right. We're going to ring them out of this town. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. as you give up, you know, ring them out. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they're out there in the vapor. We're going to see them condense. Yeah. 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 Materialize. Yeah. 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 You know? Yes. Um, so good. I'm b believing for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Ashlyn, help me put together, uh, when we break here, she help me put together. Uh, there's nine piles there for nine mm -hmm. of us. Cool. And there's, I mean, it's not like, uh, you know, necessarily spiritual, but I just, oh, there's yeah. like one for every day of the week. So there's seven. Yeah. So it's like, if that's like a thing for you, we can give them all in one day, it's fine. Get some more. Yeah. We can take more than seven, but at yeah. least let's just like agree to just give one out a day. Mm -hmm. You know? Amen. I mean, that's one a day. That's seven and nine. Right. Public math is hard, but that's 63 mm -hmm. a day. Yeah. 63 yeah. invites a day. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. pretty powerful. Yeah. That's, the, again, the law of mathematics. That's mm -hmm. the God. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm not going to try to do 63 by seven, but 42 something, about 40, 400 something people, 424, mm -hmm. 34, 40, right. 450 people maybe mm -hmm. invited in one week. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just so, it, it really challenges me, this um, James thing, because, you know, you're saying that this little tiny group can invite 450 people mm -hmm. a week? That's exactly what, that's what yeah, the math says. That's, right. Right. that's just what grace. the math says. Yeah. It's pretty mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. So. Mm -hmm. Well, um, are y'all good with me saying a kind of a closing yes. prayer? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. prayer. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we get done, when I say amen, that prayer, I just want us to clap and worship the Lord. And the yeah. reason when you clap and you bring worship the Lord, it's actually a battle thing, mm -hmm. clapping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're going to, you know, the highest form of spiritual warfare is to dance mm -hmm. you know, before the Lord in power. Now, if anybody wants to do that, they can do that too. Um, but <laughs> I'm just saying, I want us to close it out with victory, like, yes. you know, yeah. keep us supreme victory. Yes. But, mm -hmm. So I'll close this out in prayer. Uh, Father, thank you thank that you. we have come into agreement. Amen. We have uh, 
bound things. Mm. Mm. And you Thank have. You, mm. That's right. We have loose things, so you have. That's mm. right. Thank you, God. Thank you for your love. Mm. 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 And Lord, we appropriate the testimony even that Dad gave mm. Mm. for his Sunday school. We appropriate yes, it here. Let it be, God. Right. In the way that you want to bring it here, Lord. Mm. Mm. And so we yeah, just right you. now, we come completely say yes and amen yes, the verdict is sealed yes. Yes. <laughs> by you lord and yes. we're going to wait to see what you do yeah. right yeah. right and we're going to see the word come alive yes. Yes. and we're going to live Thank the word you, lord. Yes. and so lord now we're going to just worship you i know it's hard to disengage because we're right. so tight Yes. 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 Yes.